I'm Janet Fulton. I work at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in our physical activity and health branch there. I'm the chief um, of that group and um, I work in a division of nutrition, physical activity, and obesity. Hi, my name is Marie-France Hiver. I am an assistant professor at Harvard Medical School in the Department of Population Medicine and I'm the chair of the physical activity uh, committee for the Lifestyle Council. And we were just uh, moderating a session about physical activity and fitness, uh, which was a great session, well attended, and uh, we had uh, six uh, very uh, good abstract and speakers uh, coming to our session. We did, yeah. We had um, we, we had really great participation um, from you know not only the presenters but from the audience. Great questions. I think one of our highlights where we had a couple presentations about. Um, economic aspects of physical activity from a, from a population-based perspective, which was great for cardiovascular disease as well as for diabetes. Yeah, and uh, as one of our participants uh, mentioned, those kind of data are really important when we are trying to promote physical activity and, and uh, uh, have stronger arguments both for research and for public health initiatives. Mm -hmm. And I think what the presentations really demonstrated was that um, that there can be a lot of healthcare savings if, if the population moves to meet physical activity guidelines. I know the current estimates now in the population, just looking at total mortality, is that healthcare expenditures actually cost the country $117 billion. So I think that these, these presentations were very consistent with that and showed that you could really save a lot of money if you got the population to, to be more active. And that a little bit is always better than none. And that was another good presentation that, that we uh, saw and not looking just at the benefits uh, for cardiovascular health of being physically active and meeting the guideline of 150 minutes per week of moderate and vigorous activity, but what uh, would be the benefit of uh, sitting less. Uh, and I think, I think more and more we're seeing a lot of data coming out about reducing sedentary time and that's just another uh, good demonstration that we had today about, about that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I, I agree, totally agree with that. I think also that um, that, that presentation showed that after your um, heart attack, if you can become active, you can actually um, improve your outcome. So I think, I think the, the bottom line here is it's sort of never too late to, to become more active. And even in the physical activity guidelines themselves, I think a lot of people kind of forget about the first guideline, and that guideline is don't be inactive. So even a little bit, like Marie France was saying, even a little bit of activity is actually really beneficial uh, for protection of not only cardiovascular disease, but also other forms of, of diseases, all cause mortality and such. And I think uh, as clinician, uh, we should remember that for our patients who are, are really doing very little activity, just, just passing the message to, to get up a little bit and, and to start moving is as important as uh, talking about the moderate and vigorous uh, activity uh, uh, guidelines and objectives. A little bit is always better than none. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like one step at a time. Just, just get started, just get off the couch, just get moving, can really have health benefits. I know that there's recently been a um, Surgeon General's call to action on walking and walkable communities that really tries to take that message of um, and walking in a way to promote a, a more physically active lifestyle. So even just taking that first step can be beneficial for your health. And talking about that initiative, uh, we will have a, a session at the next uh, November uh, American Heart Association about uh, the uh, call for action by the Surgeon General, uh, step it up. So please so, be there. So step it up. I think the last thing that was presented was uh, also very innovative and, and is worth of mention. And it's a, a hospital-based initiative to uh, help um, patients who are post-cardiac surgery to uh, start walking uh, as soon as possible while being hospitalized. That, that, was, that was really neat. It was a really, to me, it was a really simple approach to try to get um, patients who have just had surgery up and moving and not let them be deconditioned while they're on bed rest. And uh, what they showed uh, was that if you can just get these patients up and moving, that you actually decrease the length of stay in the hospital by a day, which has obviously has some uh, cost benefits. 
as Humongous well. Humongous cost yeah. uh, benefits. They did not show that yet, no. but they're planning to do it. But I think the just reducing the length of stay is also a huge benefit for the patients to mm -hmm. be one right. last day at the hospital. But I think the uh, very novel uh, approach was to hire um, graduate uh, high school st uh, students and train them the minimal training that's needed to help patients to get up in a safe way and how the staff, especially the nursing staff on the, mm -hmm. on the wards were highly appreciative of those new uh, uh, helpers on the wards. Exactly. So yeah, so it had, it's had a immediate benefits for the patient, for the hospital, but also for the nurses because the nurses said that it actually gave them more time to do their other nursing responsibilities. So I think it had multiple benefits. And so overall it was a great session and uh, yeah. I encourage uh, everybody to attend uh, uh, Lifestyle and Epi uh, conferences. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a great session.